Once upon a time, there was a place of carved stone faces. A man with a lantern lay sleeping a dreamless sleep. The man knew nothing. One day, the man woke up. He rubbed the dried ink caked over his eyes and opened them. Around him, he saw other people stirring, and beyond, a horizon of unbroken darkness. A woman approached the man with the lantern. Her soft hand reached out to him. They had no words. They were a mystery to each other. Suddenly, a monster emerged from the darkness. Its eyes wild with hunger. It attacked. The people were no match for the monster. It tore their flesh and crushed their bones between its teeth. Some it devoured whole. Overcome with terror and grief, the man with the lantern collapsed to the ground. Cold stone noses pushed into his side. There was no escape. But the man did not want to die. Desperately grasping at the cold stone faces, he felt a crack and tore at it with all his might. A piece of stone came free. It was sharp and deadly. The man with the lantern scrambled to his feet, his weapon clenched in his fist. He took a deep breath and roared into the darkness. Somewhere in the place of stone faces, nameless men stand together. They have nothing but a need to survive and a lantern to light their struggles. Hey everybody, this is Doug here, Doug Mystic Eye on Board Game Beak, bringing you our next playthrough. This one is of Kingdom Death Monster. This will be Season 2. Uh, we're going to be starting a new settlement in this episode because I am going to, or in this series rather, because I am going to be adding in a couple of expansions to the, uh, the game and we'll get to see those in action as we go through each season. Now, this is going to be a rather long series. Uh, comprising of each video being a lantern year or a full set of a uh, full set of the turn so be prepared for that and I hope you dig in and really enjoy this I'm going to cover just a few rules in this opening video before we get to, down to the uh, the first showdown which is the one that you just saw in the story this is where we begin with our four survivors facing off against this terrible creature the white lion that has ambushed them in this uh, dark land of stone faces and we're going to get started right away so let's talk about this basic first lion I'm going to go over it just for those who don't know Kingdom Death Monster and talk about what we're going to do uh, in this scenario so as you saw in the prologue story there, there we woke up and we're being attacked by this terrible terrible creature now in this first prologue scenario, we are going to fight a white lion, but he is a custom white lion. He's not the normal level 1 white lion. And you can see him here. By the way, this is the 1.5 edition, which is another reason I restarted and didn't go into a lantern, continued lantern years of our previous um, uh, event or adventures and started new. But we have a custom deck now. Our um, white lion, he's got a, a move of 6 and a toughness of 6. So he's going to be still going to be tough. He's not going to be as tough as if he was the level one light lion, white lion, and we've customized his deck to be uh, his uh, AI deck to have certain cards in it. He's also got this instinct called sniff, and we'll deal with that later. But these are his. This is his basic action. This is the last card. As we wound him, this is his basically his last hit point right here. This card. Uh, pardon my voice, guys. I've been suffering for the entire month for of something, and it turned into a really bad sinus infection. So I am trying to rid myself of that, but in the meantime, I am going to continue to get the keep the channel going and do my thing. So anyway, this uh, this is his basic attack action, and you'll see how that plays out as we go. So that goes right here. Now you can see here that we have a stack of cards. Those are his hit location cards. Which uh, one of the neat things about this game is that every monster has its own unique hit locations that have different effects, different things when you hit them, and its own artificial intelligence deck of cards which dictates how the creature acts. Now we know because we set up this specific deck for the prologue 
that the very first card in his AI deck is going to be Claw, which is one of his abilities. And uh, these abilities are going to uh, surface as we uncover them. Now we don't, we do know all the ones in the prologue because we structured it in a certain way, so we know what what things to expect. But I'm not going to share that with you. I'm just going to play it out, and we'll see. Now, all of our characters start basically the same, so I'm just going to focus on one of them. We're just going to look at our first character here, and I named him Angus. And Angus is going to be our one of our main characters. Now, all of them start the same, and I'm just going to add a couple of little things here for you so that you can see that I'm doing it. Because I have named him, he is going to start the game with one survival point. That survival point can be used, in this case, to do activate one of these core abilities, of which we only start with the first one, which is dodge. Which means that uh, <clears throat> when we, are, we can do that when we're attacked. Now, if we're counterattacked during our own action, we cannot do that dodge. It's only when we're attacked back. Also, he has this, uh, this grid here. This grid shows the items that we have. Currently, we have a founding stone and cloth armor. The founding stone is our weapon. This is going to show you a couple of things. The first one is the speed. So we're going to roll two dice. That's what that means, basically. You get two attacks. Um, and uh, we need a seven to hit, and we do one. We have one strength with that. So that's, uh, that means that uh, that's how that, the items work. They're very straightforward. This one also has a special ability. It says, uh, spend your action to sling the stone from anywhere on the board. Archive this card, which means get, take it out of the, the game currently for one automatic hit that inflicts a critical wound and then it says archiving, it explains that archiving is returning it to the box. Okay, And this is just a very basic armor. You can see that uh, it's, it gives you one point of armor in the waist. So when we look at our character sheet right now we have one point of armor in his waist. That's all. Now there's all kinds of things that are going to happen on this sheet as we advance. There are four characters that we have. The first one, as I stated, was per was Angus, and I'll show you his miniature in a moment. And then I also I also created Percival. Uh, he is our second survivor, and then we have Annabelle and Shara. Uh, just to pick random names, I, I just pick names out of a hat to, to give them these first survivors their names, which is really cool because they it ends up telling a story. These survivors go into a settlement, and you'll get to see how all that works shortly. Now, Angus is going to be our first player, which means he has this monster controller card right now. Now, if he chooses himself to have the lion attack when, during the lion's phase, or when it counterattacks, he will get a, an insanity point. And you think, God, Doug, that sounds terrible. Well, in the world of Kingdom Death Monster, that is not terrible. Insanity actually protects your brain. It's like armor for your mind against all the terrible things you see. And once you've hit three points, you are considered to be insane, which you almost need to be to survive this world, so you gain strength from that. Now, when we, we actually kill a lion, um, we're going to get some resources that we can take back and use to manufacture better gear and uh, grow our community, and you'll see that community grow. We'll see how that plays out. If you've never played Kingdom Death before, just watch it. I hope you'll enjoy that aspect of it. It's really neat. And we're, again, we're going to play with our four survivors, Angus, Percival, Annabelle, and Shara, we're going to get started with this showdown right now. Okay, so this here is our guy, Angus. Now, I did paint these, and I'm not, I'm not going to profess to be the most expert painter, but they turned out all right. They're good for... for um, uh, miniature painting, not for professional painters. A lot of guys do cool things with the lanterns, and I saw something uh, today. I was watching Robert Orne paint his guys, and uh, he did a glaze on this, which was really neat. Uh, so I highly recommend looking at that. That was awesome. Anyway, this is uh, Angus. And uh, again, I, I've been planning to do this. I've been telling you guys I've been gonna, going to do this video for a long time, and I've had it set up, and I did a bunch of custom animations, which you've been seeing. Uh, as we start, and you'll see more of as we play for this playthrough. It's been taking me several weeks to put together, and now we're getting started with it. Anyway, this one here is going to be Annabelle. She is our, uh, our one of our survivors. You notice that the poor lady just has a glowing cloth as well to keep her covered, and she's got her stone, uh, founding stone with her right there. And Angus and Annabelle are going to start way in the back there behind the white lion. This is our starting positions. We have to be six away in this first fight. There's no terrain or anything special at this point in time. This is Percival. That's him right there. He's a, the hottie dude. Thinks he's too cool for school. 
uh, and he's uh, standing up straight and tall, ready to fight this lion. He's going to be, again, one, two, three, four, five, six away. We're going to put him right there. And then also we have, this is going to be Shara right here. And that is her miniature. And she is going to be right back there, ready to attack the lion. Now, we're going to get started, and the first thing we're going to so do... So in this basic showdown, the white lion actually goes first. He pounced on us. He came in to attack us. And we know that the actual um, uh, account and thing we're going to deal with is his claw attack. So we're going to draw that uh, as his first, uh, his first artificial intelligence card that we're going to use in the game. So let's take a look at that and see what it does. So we draw the first of the AI cards, and it does say claw. So you can see that here, and I'll put it up on screen for you. It says pick a target closest threat facing in range okay well there aren't any so we got clo now we have closest threat in field of view so in field of view is everybody nobody's knocked down or anything like that and we have to determine whether or not he can get to them so one of the interesting things about this basic scenario is his movement which is six it's just enough to get to somebody so I basically have a choice to make as Angus is the monster controller he could gain an insanity by having the uh, and this is the monster controller card, which I shared, um, by having himself be attacked. And I think that's what we're going to do. So the, the white lion turns and goes, is basically going to go one, two, three, four, five to here, where he's going to use this claw attack on Angus. That gives Angus a insanity of one, which I will mark on the sheet for him. And it's going to attack him with two dice. That's the speed. So it gets two hits with a 2 plus accuracy and it does 1 damage. There's not much that he can do to stop this. He could, now because the lion's attacking him, he can use his dodge to avoid at least one of these attacks if he hits, if they both hit. We got a 4 and a 10, so they both did in fact hit. Then we roll our location dice to see where they hit uh, Angus. So he got hit in the waist twice. That's actually pretty good for us because that is the one location which with we have armor. So let's go take a look at his sheet and see what we're going to do. Just to point out, here's the insanity that he's got. He does have one survival, which he's about to use, and he has one point of armor in his waist. So he's going to take a hit in the waist, and I think he's not going to use his dodge because the next hit in the waist is simply going to cause a light wound. It won't actually do anything to him. So we're going to let that go because that's going to be the lion's one actual attack that it gets to do this turn, and it is complete. So now we're going to go to the actions of our survivors. So I could have spent his survival to use dodge and avoid one of these hits, but since it hit him both times in the waist, it really didn't hurt us any to do that. And next time, if we get something terrible like a hit to the head, which automatically goes to a heavy wound, then we can, we can avoid that hit. Now, you can only use that dodge ability on the lion's turn when it's attacking you. If it counterattacks you during your turn, you cannot use your survival to do those things. Now that that's happened, Angus is going to take his turn. Now, he is going to move first, but I want to talk about his weapons and stuff that he has. He has his founding stone and his cloth armor. Okay, we've already dealt with what the effect of the cloth armor was. It protected his waist for one. Right now, it's useless until he, he until after this showdown. And if he goes into another showdown, this armor becomes whole again automatically. But he has his founding stone, which he can stab with. It does two dice. needs a seven or better to hit. If I can get into its blind spot, it's your hex. It actually needs a six or better. And it does one point of uh, damage. So... Let's take a look at that and see what we're going to do. Now, uh, we're going to move him first, and then we're going, to go, we're going to attack the white lion. So Angus is going to go one, two, three, four, and five. You cannot move diagonally. So he moves in behind the white lion to attack him, and he's going to uh, roll, be able to roll his 2d10 to do that. Here's the 2d10, and uh, he needs, again, he needs sixes or better to hit. Wow, he hit, he hit once and got a perfect hit. Now, later on when we have better stuff, the perfect hit will actually matter. But uh, right now, it just matters that he did actually hit. So we're going to draw two hit location cards from the line and see what we do. This is a pretty good start. And by the way, I just want to point out that this goes into the AI discard pile. It will be shuffled back in if we run out of AI cards. So the claw is there. So let's draw our first hit. It is in the strange hand. Now we get to draw both of them and decide which one's going first. Well, they both have a failure effect, but let's see which one's worse. We can get him in the fleshy gut. Now this has a fantastic critical effect, and it could gain us uh, some stuff. So we're probably going to do that one first. 
both of these have a failure effect where he's going to attack us back if we fail. So we really need to get some luck here. Um, but basically this one is, uh, they're both doing the exact same thing. They're both going to perform a basic action on the attacker if we fail to, to connect. Now, we do have a strength of one on this. So the, the lion's toughness is going to be, in, the, in this basic white line, is going to be a six. Which means we only need a five or better to actually wound the, uh, the white line. That's not 100% true. We still need a six to hit, but we get to add one to our dice rolls. So let's roll and see what we get. So the first one on the, we got to roll one at a time. First one we're going to go on the fleshy gut. What do we get? A one. So it fails and it's going to turn and attack Angus. That is not good. Bad start. And so now that I really I can't do anything about these, I probably should have dodged the last one, right? So the lion hits back and only hit once. That's good for one point of damage. And it hit him in the torso. So as we look at Angus's sheet, we know we're going to hit him in the body. He has no armor there, so he takes a light injury. That's his second light injury, so he's already getting into some trouble here. Now that was unfortunately a wasted hit on the fleshy gut, which would have been a good one for us, but it did not happen. So now we're going to roll on the second one and see if he can actually hit that one. A seven, he does. So he does not critical, but he does wound the white lion, which means his failure effect will not happen. So we're going to discard that. But then what happens after that is that we draw one of his AI cards without looking at it and put it in his wound stack. Now that's one new ability that he doesn't have that he can no longer do and it's one point closer to his death. So uh, Angus didn't do too badly. He got a wound on him but he took some hits in the process. Next up we're going to go with uh, Annabelle since she's right behind him already. Okay well here's Annabelle. She really doesn't need to move anywhere. She's just going to swell. She'll move over one because uh, she wants to give... Uh, the other character's a chance to get in behind the lion. Or no, she doesn't. She's going to stay where she's at so that Ang if it works out, Angus can run back around behind the lion there. Now, again, she's got her founding stone. She's going to roll two dice, of which she hit one time. So she got one hit, which means we're going to draw one hit location. Okay, and that hit location is going to be the straining neck. Now, you can see that it doesn't have a negative effect. It says you strike at the throat of the monster. However, if we can critical it, we could kill it in one massive blow. That would be pretty awesome. We'll see if that actually happens. Let's go to the table and roll her attack. Well, she's already attacked. We're going to roll to see if she can damage the creature. She rolled an 8. That's a 9. That's all. She didn't critical, and she would have had to roll a natural 10 anyway, but she did wound the lion, so let's go deal with that. So the straining net hit, neck hit location goes back in here. We take another one of the AI cards, and we put it there. Good start. We've got two hits on it already. Angus is still okay. Just got to worry about him in a little bit. Now let's take our other player's turns. Now, unfortunately, I kind of positioned him in a bad place, and I did it on purpose to show you how the game can really tank you if you don't pay attention. So I'm going to show you the other guys are going to be able to move, but they're not going to be able to do anything to the lion this turn. It is, unless one of them wants to throw their founding stone. So we're going to start with Percival right here. He's, he's going to move five, so he's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Now, he does not like the lion at all, and he wants to be Mr. Tooth and... Uh, claw guy or fist and tooth dude so he's going to throw his founding stones lion that creates an automatic hit that is a critical so of course he'll lose his founding stone and that's okay uh, but we'll get a critical hit on, if, on the the lion now if it was on that straining neck we could have killed it outright but we're not going to let's see where he hits the lion there is no roll for this this is automatic so let's see what happens here we got him in the fuzzy groin. Okay, but man, he must have lifted up his leg to claw or something. We got him right in the testes. You hit the monster right in the groin. Now, this is a critical. So, we gained, the, we gained one lion's testes white lion resource. And this goes in his traits because he now has a persistent injury. It says, lost ding dong. <laughs> this is real, guys. Okay, uh, your attack destroys the white lion's healthy genitals. The monster is livid. The white lion... Gains plus one damage token, which is bad. That means he's doing more damage to us. The attacker permanently gains priority target token, and the white lion will attack them until the attacker is dead, or the white lion is dead, no exception. So this was both good and bad. Let's let's deal with what we need to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get these uh, white lion resources here, and we're going to flip through them uh, and see if we'll look for the testes. They yes, they are in here. I promise you. Um, let's see where is it? It's probably gonna be the last thing. No, there it is. Those are the lion's testes. Now we gain these as a resource. They are used as both an organ and a consumable. So I'm going to put that with our characters for now. And then, but then we have a whole nother issue that's going to take place. So Percival here loses his founding stone. So that goes away. 
We did, however, get the White Lion's resource, which I'm going to put off to the side. However, he gets this thing. This is the Priority Target Token, which goes on Ang on uh, Percival. And it says here, Priority Target Token. When a monster performs uh, a pick target action, it picks you. When you are picked as a target, discard this token unless something spe specifies otherwise, i.e.g. the fuzzy groin. So we, he is going to have this for the rest of the game. And then there's this. Well, we're going to flip it, but we're going to put that here along with this card because now he has this persistent injury uh, that may affect him as we go but this does give him plus one strength in his attacks he is totally outraged by that event that was absolutely awful we need to kill this thing even faster than before last but not least we have Shara who's way on the other side of the board and she's going to go one two three four five and I'm really debating on whether or not I would not normally want to throw her founding stone as well but the problem is, is that now I'm, I'm really worried that we're going to lose Percival pretty quickly if that light, the white line focuses on him and we don't kill him quick, as quickly as possible. I mean, he's got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits that still need to take place on him. Um, I think we're going to wait because I don't think, uh, while Tooth and Fist and Tooth has that ability to critical better, it's also much harder to hit. It's almost three points worse to hit. So I think we're going to hold off there, and that's going to mark the turn of the players. Now we're going to go back to the lion. So the first thing that we do is we draw the lion's AI and see what it says. Power SWAT. Pick target. Well, we know who that is. Closest threat facing in range is going to be uh, Percival, no matter what. And then he's going to run toward that target. He is within range. Um, he is going to move and attack. It's speed one. Now there's a break here. What that means is, is if I had an ability to do something, I could do something in between that break, like perhaps encourage somebody to stand up or surge and get an extra action or something like. Just give you some examples. However, we're going to do this at speed one. That means he only gets one hit two accuracy but it's going to do by the way not two damage but three damage and you notice that there is an after damage a token there uh, it looks like the knock yeah okay there's gonna be an after effect knock back six the target has moved six spaces in a straight line away from the monster so this is a really powerful attack that is going to be happening on Percival so here we go it's going to go one two three four to right here Good news is, is that our guys will be able to get behind it, and it's going to attack Percival with one die. It's only going to miss on a one. Uh, it's got an accuracy of two, so it's not likely to miss and did not miss. So it hit Angus or hit uh, Percival for three points of damage. Now, because it is a lion's attack, he can use his dodge ability, which he's probably going to, depending on where it hit. Hit him in the torso. That would absolutely do a critical wound to him. So he is going to spend his survival. So we're going to erase that and he's going to use the dodge ability. Now, again, this was the lion's turn, so he can do that. That basically nullifies the effect of this. So he is not knocked back, and he is not hit. It basically dodges the entire attack. And that is actually going to be the end of the lion's uh, turn. So that wasn't so bad. If we can do a lot of damage to him right now, we'll be in better shape. Of course, Percival does not have a weapon. But it's, he's still going to be able to hit, and I think we're going to let him get behind the lion to do as much damage, because it'll give him a chance, it'll give him a 7 instead of an 8 to hit him. And we you know he's got that extra critical ability, so let's take a look at that. Actually, that is who goes next, because we pass the monster controller token over to Percival. Alright, so Percival is going to move 5. He's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 to right there will he get two attacks on the white line with his fists. He's just beaten on it now at this point. Now he needs an eight or better, but because he's behind the white line, he gets a plus one, so he needs a seven or better to hit. And he missed both times. That is really unfortunate. So he did not hit the white line in his turn. That's going to end his turn. So let's go on then to, I guess we'll go to, um, yeah, because I think it'd be easier for uh, Angus to get to the side of it. So we'll go with uh, Annabelle. She's right here. She's going to go one, two, three, Four, five. She'll go in at the side, right here, right there. Uh, she's that means she does not get that extra bonus, but she does have a founding stone. So, um, not that that matters. She's going to need sixes to hit. Okay. 
And she got one hit on the lion. That is good. So we got a hit on the lion. Let's draw the hit location and see what we get. We got the glorious maiden. Now this one sucks because uh, it's impervious to hit locations. Cannot be wounded. A wound or critical wound will not remove an AI card. And we have to critical. If we critical, we get the shining main resource. But she's not going to do any damage. So let's roll and see if she can critical. Because if she can, then that will be helpful. All right, Annabelle, let's do it. A five. No. So that's going to go away. And her attack was basically worthless because of that. So I guess we'll go with uh, Angus next. And, uh, it, you know, um, uh, Char is not going to be able to get in and attack this turn. So it's not going to matter much. But we're going to go one, two, right to there. And he is going to attack the lion from there with 2d10. And he gets uh, one hit. This six will hit exactly. That's what he needs to hit. So he got one hit on the lion. As you can see, even this basic lion is pretty darn tough. Oh, this one's bad because it's got a real bad failure effect on it. Okay, the beast's scapular deltoid. All right, it says full move monster forward. This is if we fail in a straight line. Well, let's deal with that if we fail. I'm not going to assume we're going to fail. Now, the only reason he hit with that 6 was because he was attacking from behind. Remember, the Founding Stone has a base hit of 7, but because he was attacking from the blind spot, he got plus 1. That made that a 7. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, do damage, and I think I'm going to use this special new die to see if that helps us in any way. Oh, man, we do not want to fail this. Oh, my God, he got a critical. Look at that. Oh, that is such, a, such good timing. Critical hit by Angus. He's going to be our dude, man. He's going to be our guy. He's going to be killer. All right, let's see. Critical. Cancel uh, the reflex on this card, so the reflex does not happen. The trauma of the impact fractures the white lion's shoulder. White lion gains minus one movement token. So this, I'm just, I don't need to keep this in persistence. I'm going to put it away. We're going to do that, And but first we're going to do the damage. He loses another AI card, and then we're going to the old white lion a minus one movement token. So we're digging him up, but it's sure painful. Okay, let's go to, to uh, Shara now. She's going to go next. So right now, all the survivors are the same. But as we advance in our society, which you'll see in the settlement phase, they will change over time and become different. Anyway, she's going to go one, two, three, four, five. So she's starting to get into range. Do I t try to get him with the Founding Stone, throw the Founding Stone? That'll leave two of our guys. Hopefully we get enough resources to make weapons to give them in later showdowns. It's a risk. I think uh, she's going to hold on to it. I think we're just going to stop there and take a chance. Now, we know that uh, we know that our guy, uh, Percival, cannot dodge these next three point, possibly three point attacks. Could be really bad. Could be, could, could result in his death, but I think we need to hold on to that founding stone just a little longer. <laughs> Yes, here we are with the lion's turn again. So let's draw his AI card and see what terrible things he does to our players. Grasp. Well, this is a pretty rough one. So he's going to turn on Ang on uh, Percival again. It says pick target. Closest knock knockdown survivor, uh, survivor in range. Well, there's no one knocked down, and it doesn't really matter because he's simply going to spin around and do this to Percival. Okay, uh, it says move and attack. He doesn't need to move. He just turned around. Speed one, two accuracy, one damage, and the white lion isolates its prey, full move the white lion away from all survive, all threats, target suffers grab, and here's what grab does, Pick, uh, place target knocked down in front of the monster, target suffers one damage per monster level. So, I mean, this could, this one event could kill Percival. Okay, let's see if he kills Percival. <laughs> An eight, well, he hit Percival, remember he's going to hit him in one of the locations for three points of damage, nothing Percival can do. Got hit in the hand. Okay, so he got hit in the arm right here. He has no armor, so he takes a light injury first. Then he takes a heavy injury, which would knock him down. He's going to be knocked down anyway. And then, unfortunately, he takes a severe injury to the hand. So we're going to have to deal with that. Okay, here, my friends, is the severe injury table. We're going to be rolling on the arms chart right here. What do we get? We get a 9. That can't. Hopefully, that's not too bad. Dislocated shoulder. Pop. You cannot activate a two-handed or paired weapons or use block until sh the showdown ends. Gain one bleed token. Now, that is about the least severe thing that could have happened. This, however, is a bleed token. Now, bleed tokens aren't that bad. Basically, though, if we get up to five bleed tokens, then we will die. So once you hit your fifth bleed token, you bleed to death. So we're bleeding right now. It's not terrible. However, remember, that was only the first effect of that card. 
So he's going to run away from the threat. Okay, so he's only going to move five because of the result of his, he's normally moves six, but remember we hurt him and he's only moving one less. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, and five to there. He's going to drag Percival with him. Percival ends up right here and we have to roll another hit location. Hopefully it's not in the arm. In the foot. Okay, so he got hit in the leg one more time. He's going to take one light injury in the leg, but that's okay. He's still kicking, man. Is he still kicking? Uh, and now that, that injury could have, you know, those injuries can result in instant death. So I'm glad that that's not the way it ended up. That is the end of the White Lion's turn. Now, um, I believe I got to look at, at knockdown. I think he gets up at the end of his, at the end of the turn. So I think he may not get up yet. Referring to Percival there, I think he's stuck on the ground for the moment. Let me check. Yes, so unfortunately Percival is not going to be getting up until the end of the White Lion's next phase. Well, so the one thing that's interesting about that is I got to look that up with that priority target. He is not a target uh, if he's knocked down. And so I have to look at that fuzzy groin thing again and see what the impact of that is. All right, anyway, it's we're back around to our players' turns with the exception of Percival. And I think we're going to go first with Shara. Um, one, let me see, can he get to the one, two, three, four, five? He cannot get to the, the two, those two cannot get to the white lion. So Shara's going to go first. She's going to go one, two, three, four to there and strike with her founding stone. I'm glad we didn't throw it yet. So she's going to roll two dice again. She needs a, a seven or better, a six or better in this case to hit. And she rolled and got one hit on the white lion. Let's draw and see what we get. I'm really worried about Percival. He might not make it, but let's see. We get the beast's elbow. Okay, well, we if we fail, he's going to do a big move. So let's hope he doesn't. She doesn't fail in hitting him. Come on, Shara. We need the damage. A nine. Now, unfortunately, it's not a critical because she's fighting with her founding stone. It would have been a critical. If she's fighting with her fists. But we do damage the uh, creature. So let's take care of that. I'm going to remove yet another card. We only have one. There's only one left plus these two and his basic one. So we remove another card and this beast's elbow, the failure effect, does not take place. So we're going to put that back. And that is the end of her turn, her action. So we start with her. So she's actually the monster controller. Actually, the monster controller right now is Annabelle. Okay, let's move on to Annabelle while we're at it. Annabelle goes one, two, three, four, five. See, she can't quite make it to the lion. Um, and, uh, man, do we give the lion another round or do we try and attack? We can't kill it this turn anyway. So I think she's going to stop there. She's not going to use her founding stone. And then we're going to have Angus go one, two, three, four, five as well. We're going to get closer and we're going to hope beyond hope. I'm sorry, there was actually, I forgot to put that back because so there's actually three cards in the discard pile. We got a long ways to go. And that's going to be the end of the player's turn, so now we're going to take the lion's turn. The only thing I need to check is, double check, just for my own memory, is a downed opponent is not considered a target, so will it still attack Percival this turn? Um, if Does he count as a target? I'll have to check it. Just say that on this card, when you pick, when you're picked as a target, discard this token unless something specifies. When a monster performs a pick target action, it picks you, but when you're down, when you're locked down, you're not considered a target. So I have to really look at that. Okay, let's move on. That would actually be good for us. Let's draw the Lion's AI card, his last AI. Oh, it's his mood. What is he going to do? He's enraged. When this comes into play, draw an AI card. Okay. Um, so we're going to have to shuffle up his remaining AI cards. Three of them. I'm going to draw a second one. Okay, let's finish this card off though. While Enraged is in play, the White Lion gains plus one damage token. He's at four damage now, guys. Um, per monster level. Uh, a damage token increases the damage dealt by the monster by one. When a survivor suffers a dismembered severe injury or killed, discard Enraged. So that is going to go right here, and i got to get him another strength token. Or damage token, rather. Well, strength token. Yep. And here that is. I mean, this is really, really bad. Man, we got to get this guy. We may all be throwing our founding stones this turn. But we have to draw another AI and see what he does. Hopefully everybody else can still dodge him. Let's see what he gets. Claw. Okay, so it's going to be a basic attack. It's going to be closest threat facing in range. So there's, there is no threat facing in range. Um, 
the uh, our guy Percival does not count as a target because he's knocked down. It'd be like as if he's behind something as well. Uh, closest threat in field of view. Well, that is everyone except for Shara. So he will turn to face, I guess, Angus. Um, he can't. Yeah, he'll go there to Angus, and, and Angus is going to be attacked with two uh, attacks at two accuracy. So let's do that. Uh, Angus can dodge, though. He has no armor left, but he can dodge and attack. Okay, well, oh my god, look what I rolled, guys. That is, oh gosh, I'm not on the table. I hate it when I do that. I'm so sorry. But he rolled once, <laughs> which means he missed both times. Okay, I am so sorry for that. I gotta pay, it's because I'm sick. I'm sorry. I've gotta pay attention to making sure the camera gets angled to the right place. Anyway, uh, the lion missed Angus completely. So that was a pretty cool effect. We're going to get rid of this AI card, nothing happened, it has the end of his turn. Now we're going to attack the heck out of this dude. Alright, so back around to the player's turns. God, I'm so sorry I messed that up so you could not see the ones being rolled. That would have been awesome. Anyway, that was the end of his turn, so Percival is also up. Uh, and I think we're going to start with uh, we want to get some people behind him that can do some damage. I think we'll start with Angus. He'll go one, two, three, four, five. Call on the line of Punk for attacking with two ones and missing. So that's pretty awesome. Anyway, let's uh, roll. He got, wow, was that two hits? That is two hits from behind. That is outstanding. Good job, Angus. Now, there is the chance of risk that we draw a trap card out of his hit location, which will null and void all those, but we'll see. Hopefully we don't draw it now. <laughs> Swear to God, I did not know that was going to happen. Well, let's drop out the hit location. doesn't matter. Um, trap. Reshuffle the hit location decks. Now we're going to reshuffle them all back in. Uh, the attacker is caught in the white lines ruse and is savagely mauled. Attacker is doomed. That means I cannot use, I cannot dodge the attack. I can't use my uh, survival this turn. Perform basic, uh, uh, basic action. Target the attacker. Doomed. You may not spend survival until this card is resolved, right? The trap reminder rules, and this card's gonna be resolved right now. So I'm just gonna get rid of both those cards. We're gonna reshuffle them anyway, but let's go do that. This could be really bad. We know that the basic action is going to be two dice. Uh, it's going to uh, do two, two pluses to hit and does one damage, but in this case, it's doing uh, three damage per hit. Really, really nasty. Let's see what happens. Well, uh, he got two hits on him. Now, because we're doomed, we cannot dodge. This could be the end of our guy. So, uh, this is the first hit right here. Let's see where he hits him. He hits him in the torso. Well, for Angus, this bugger is doing three points of damage. I want to show you what's going to happen here. So, he already took a hit. So, he takes another hit, heavy hit. So, he's going to get knocked down. But he also takes a severe injury. Okay, so, man, our guys are going to be, like, all grizzled up warriors by the time they get back from this very first fight. Anyway, we're going to roll on this body chart, see what we get. We got a 10. Is that bad? I don't know. Uh, probably not too bad. Okay, a 10. We were bowled over. The blow sends you sprawling, and you are knocked down. Well, he was going to be knocked down anyway because of the severe injury. But that's not going to stop this second attack from happening either, so let's roll to see where that attack is. This is going to be bad. Uh, in this foot. Okay. All right, so he got hit in the leg. He's got no armor, so we're going to check both these boxes. He's already knocked down, and he takes another severe injury. And this is the way this game goes. I've had it where we've just weighed, laid waste to the line, and other times like this where, man, we're just getting trounced. Anyway, here's the chart for the leg. Let's see what we get. We roll an 8. Broken leg. An earth-shattering crunch. That's not good. Adjacent survivors suffer one brain damage. That's not good either, because we don't have any... Um, Insanity to, to stop ourselves from uh, going, taking the damage. Suffer one permanent movement. This injury is permanent and cannot and can be recorded twice. Gain one bleed token. Okay, well this is no bueno. Well, we'll start with good old Angus. He actually had an insanity, so that bounces off him. However, under here, under his movement, it is now a four. That is really awful. Okay, let's go on to our other survivors. Uh, I'm just going to mark their check their brain box. Because they don't have any insanity, but they get to get one checkbox before they take any severe mental injury. So just to demonstrate that, the, here is uh, Percival. Now that will go away after the fight, assuming a lot of things. Assuming that we, we managed to live through that. So I'm gonna, uh, we're going to continue on now. The, the player controller right now is going to be um, Shara. I keep forgetting to move those. And we're going to re totally redo his hit location deck and shuffle it all up. So 
let's uh, let's do that. Oh my lord! Wow, this has been really, really horrendously rough on us, guys. Really rough. The good news about the uh, enrage thing, the one good thing about it is it's out of the deck. So if we kill him, it does not come back into the deck. All right. Well, here is his reshuffled hit location deck. We'll see how that goes. All right, that was our first character. <laughs> Actually, that was really bad. All right, uh, next up, I think we'll go with uh, Annabelle, who's just pissed off at this. So here goes Annabelle. Boom, boom, goes to there. And she's going to attack the white line from behind. Let's see what she gets. She got a, a single hit on it. Let's uh, draw our hit location card. Okay, what do we get? The beast's elbow. Okay, there's a failure effect, so if she does not wound, we'll look at that failure effect. Okay, come on, Annabelle, let's get this done. A seven! That will, yeah, that will hit. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, now uh, now we know that uh, we do not get this failure effect, so we're just going to discard this card and rem remove another AI card. He's only got three cards left before we put him down, guys. This could be good. Now, we could get three hits right now. We got three characters that can still attack. We could do them in. Well, next up will be Shara because she's only going to move over one more and attack him from behind as well. Let's see what she can do. She got two hits on him. One was a perfect hit, though that doesn't matter at this point. Um, and so let's go draw his hit location. Where if this is the trap again, I'm going to freak out. It's not. Okay, good. We've got the beast tail and the beast femur. Well, we're going to do the beast femur first because there's no reaction to it. Uh, and hopefully we can critical hit, but let's see. Let's put these out. We're going to do the beast femur first, followed by the beast tail. The beast tail has a reaction on it, so we're going to do that second. So here's the roll for the beast's femur. A five, that is not going to be... Wait, a uh, six. That is a six because of the strength of the weapon. So we just damaged him. That is great. Okay, we can kill him. We can kill him, guys. This could be it. So looking at this guy, he's got a six toughness. And the Founding Stone has a plus one strength. So we needed a five or better. We got it. So we uh, damaged him here. Let's roll for the second one and see what happens. And a two. So we missed on the second roll. Okay, so his AI deck is technically empty because that goes in there. But we missed on the second roll, so we have to look at the reflex action. So basically all he's got in here is claw at this point. Uh, full move the monster forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. Any survivor passed over suffers grab. Well, that will be uh, um, uh, Percival again, and we know what grab does. So let's go take a look at that. Remember, our lion doesn't move as far either. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five to there, because he does not move six anymore. He dragged, I'm sorry, dragged Angus with him. Now, he's not going to get the big damage bonus, but Angus has been grabbed and dragged, and I don't think he does any, it does say he does suffer a point of damage. Let's see where that is. It's in his body again, guys. He does not have any way to take that, so he is suffering another severe injury. Okay, here's the body, guys. Let's see what happens to Angus. Man, I'm worried that this is going to be the end of him. A three, bleeding, gain two bleed tokens. Actually, that's about the, one of the best things that could have happened. Those bleed tokens don't really have any effect on him right now. So we put three bleed tokens on Angus. Eh, well, it's better than nothing, right? That was, I mean, it could have been a lot worse. There's a lot of worse things that could have happened. Anyway, we still have uh, Percival to go. He hasn't gone yet. Unfortunately, this turn, Percival is going to be the target of this attack. So hopefully he kills it. He's going to go one, two, three, right behind it. And he's going to attack it twice. Let's see what he does. Boosh! Two hits! That is outstanding. All right. Let's see what we get. We're going to get two hit locations. We got the Beast Tricep. Both have a failure effect. I think we're going to do this Beast Tricep first. It just performs a basic attack action on the attacker, so it'll actually turn and run. If, if we fail this one, then it'll run back toward the other survivors. I think that's the right way to do. Let's put these out and do this. Okay, guys, here we go. We're going to attack this Beast Tricep. Let's hope he gets it. An eight, he did. So he wounded that one, so he's got one wound on it. Okay, we're down to the Beast Chest. Let's see what we can do. A ten, he critical. Oh, my gosh, what does that even do? <laughs> I don't know. All right, critical wound, guys. Sorry for the sniffles. You strike the white lion's stout heart, gain one random white lion resource, and roll one d10. If the result is a 10, the white lion dies in instantly. But I rolled an 8. Doesn't matter, because these two wounds are going to do in the white lion. Yes. We take this last card from here, and the only card he has left is his basic action. That is removed. These two things killed him. We killed the basic white lion. Yay! Okay, now we get another free resource which is going to be one 
great cat bone. That is good. Now we are also going to get four additional resources. Let's get our rewards now for this fight. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you is I think I'm going to stop after this fight because I'm going to ask a question of you guys, and I'll start the settlement phase in the next game. And I'll, there's a number of reasons why I want to do it that way. So here are our resource decks. We've got White Lion and, re and Standard Resources. We're going to get four from each, plus the Lion Testes and the Great Cat Bone that we already got. So we have these in here. Now, I said uh, there's a reason why I want to do this. this. So normally, in a normal turn, I'm going to do a whole Lantern year, meaning that um, I will do the whole year in one video. So that will be the hunt, hunt phase, showdown phase, settlement phase. But in this particular video, I'm going to wait to the settlement phase, and I'm going to tell you why in a moment. But let's take the rest of our resources. So we get another... We get the lion tail. Hey, we almost got that before. Now we do get it. We can get another great, great cat bone. We get white fur. That is awesome. And another great cat bone. So those are our four resources plus the two that we started with for the great cat. We can move those aside. Now we're going to draw from the uh, regular resource deck. I haven't shuffled this in a while. I'm just going to give it a quick shuffle. Man, that was a rough fight, guys. I mean, Angus walked away with a broken leg. Permanent injury to his movement. Okay, we got a broken lantern. Eh, not useful right now. Mo uh, monster bones. Another broken lantern. Yuck. And uh, monster organ. Okay, so we got quite a few resources there. That's a pretty good haul that we're taking back with us. And that's going to be where I'm going to end this particular video because I do want to uh, do the settlement phase in the next video and why. So thank you for watching this whole video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm putting a lot of work into this one. I'm not going to display cards constantly like I have in the past because it takes a lot of time to edit and I want to do this series rather quickly for you. But what I do want you to do right now are two things. First off, I want you to pick a name for our settlement. When we go to the settlement phase next turn, um, I am going to uh, name the settlement. So, post your settlement names here, and the one that has the most likes under this video will be the name of the settlement that we have. Don't be too hokey. I don't want to hear, like, lion's balls, okay? We already saw those. Let's not do that for a settlement. Let's make it fun and cool. It can still be humorous if you really want to, or uh, let's make it cool. So, pick the settlement name. The one that gets the most votes will be the settlement name. The second thing is, is... Um, I'm going to offer this first to my patrons. Patrons, uh, please name the first next three survivors because we will be creating uh, new survivors as we go. I want to know what the, what you want there as well. Also, um, that's going to be it for this turn. And then also, guys, keep, put, it, put in your guesses, I gave you a hint, for the two um, supplements, the two uh, um, extra things I'm going to be adding into the game. Uh, meaning the uh, expansion packs that I'm going to be adding in. I'm going to be adding in two of them. Uh, if you can guess what they are, uh, maybe I'll throw in a little prize or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But guess what they are. See what you think. Now, I get it. I gave, I gave, I've already given a hint to one of them, um, and uh, you can probably figure it out. But there is going to be another. And now I'm going to tell you, I'm not doing a special campaign. So, like, there's one called the People of the Sun or whatever. I'm not doing that. This is still the basic campaign. But that doesn't mean I can't add those expansions in. I'm not saying I'm doing that one. I'm just giving you an idea of what I am doing. So tell me what you think it's going to be. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Uh, by all means, jump over and become a patron of mine. It's going to pay off for you, I promise. Uh, and I will talk to you in the next video.